Alleluia Ministries International is a Bible-believing and Christ-centered church. We believe Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. His power is still at work in the church today, just as it was in the time of the Bible. We are AMI. God has made available the blessings of heaven for you. What you need to do is to tap into it. You may have it and not enjoy it if you do not follow what the Lord has said. It is important for you to make sure to understand that the mere fact that you say, I go to church is not enough. You must be deep in God and you grow in God every day. Oh, when I join church, it's good. But you got to understand my people perish because of lack of knowledge meaning that they are God's people who are not knowledgeable the mere fact that you are a child of God does not open you to all the knowledge immediately it does not automatically come to you you have to build it up one of the first job that God has given man and the only one that came before the fall of man before sin was that man may be a cultivator out of the sweat you shall live when God gives you a relationship, He wants you to cultivate it. When God gives you a gift, be it the gift of the Holy Ghost or talent, He wants you to cultivate it. It is good to have it, but until you cultivate it, you develop it, you may not enjoy it. Understanding also will give you your rightful position in God. It will align you. When God wanted you back, after the fall of man, sin had taken over and God was claiming you back. The Bible says he raised an altar and he sacrificed the best he had on that altar. In Golgotha, he put his own son to die on the cross of Calvary, to shed his blood so he may get you back. What you cannot get naturally, you will get it through your altar. I receive it. This is a presentation of Alleluia Ministries International. You can't play with the altar. Now, I have taught you that every altar has a guardian. You gotta be a guardian of your altar. Now, though there are many things to say about the quality of a guardian of the altar, to the pastors, I had shared seven key things that makes a guardian of the altar effective. But those are for pastors leading general altars, meaning altars for everybody. But I want to share with you three very key things for your own personal altar. Jesus. If you have an altar and uh, you as a guardian of this altar have to be uh, effective, the first quality or the first thing that uh, you have to do, you must be committed to your altar. An altar whose guardian is distracted will miss the opportunity of being effective. A guardian of the altar must be committed to his altar. You have raised an altar, an altar in your home for your children. This was not a joke. It was not an event of a day that you do today and move on. You must know that uh, your altar cannot die by itself. You moving on does not kill it. You must as well pay attention to it. Now, if you have to call yourself a guardian of an altar, you must be committed to that altar. So much so that uh, when you look at evil altars and people that run shrines, you will see them day and night on the shrine. It is the workplace. Right. It is the base. It is the operation point. Mm. You must be committed to your altar. So if I am a guardian of this altar, I will be committed to this altar. God has led you to raise an altar. But you are everywhere but on your altar. You even do not remember what the altar is about. I had an altar, no. 
Lift your hand and say, my altar, my life. My altar, my life. Say, my altar, my power base. My altar, my power base. Therefore, you got to be completely committed to it. My altar cannot be a place for my children to go in and out. No. I got it. I am present. Because I understand what comes out of it. My altar is a live wire. Jesus, thank you. It's not a place for a child play. You must be committed to it. If it is your altar. And if you are guardian over it, your commitment to it must be to the maximum. Mm. Two, very quickly. An effective guardian of an altar must be able to lay the highest sacrifice on that altar at all times. A guardian of the altar must be able to lay the highest sacrifice on the altar at all times. If I am a guardian of this altar, I must be able to lay on this altar the highest sacrifice. The altar of my family the altar that the Lord led you to raise for your family, as a guardian of that altar, you must lay on it at all required time the highest sacrifice. Not your children. You, because you are guardian of this altar. Amen. If I am your spiritual father, if I am established here as guardian of this altar, it is given to me my responsibility before God to lay on this altar the highest sacrifice. If there will be people on this altar who offer more than me, something is wrong with my position as a guardian. That's why I keep on saying, I must live on my knees so you may stand on your feet. Thank you, Jesus. My job as a guardian of this altar is uh, to be an intercessor. To be the one who stands before God and speak to God from this place for your lives. The sacrifice required on this altar is literally my human life. While everybody go party, excuse me, I might not attend. Why? Because I need to be on this altar. That's right. I don't have time for pity party time. No, I don't have time to throw stone to another. No, I don't have time to gossip. I don't have time to be distracted. I'm time. too busy on this Jesus. altar. No, hear me. Jesus. You will not see it from me. You never hear me openly or in secret, directly or indirectly throw stone on the man of God. Never. On a man of God, I will never throw a stone. I understand you. I don't understand you. That's your business with God. I am busy laying myself here. I don't have time for good time. I don't have time for good time. I need to travel. Jesus. I need to agonize your mind. The devil is not shooting blank. Yes. I need to be a shield. I need to stand just like Moses did on the mountain town for Israel and say, Lord, do not allow the Midianite to overcome your children. Do not allow your son to die with this disease. Do not allow your daughter to fall in that trap. Oh, oh Jehovah. Jesus. Oh, God. A guardian of 
the altar must be able to lay the highest sacrifice. Paul in 1 Corinthians say, I thank God I pray in tongue more than you all. The old English say more than ye all. I love the ye all. I thank God I pray in tongue. More than ye all. When he say ye all, he's talking about men and women filled with the Holy Ghost. Who prophesied and operated in all kind of a, a gift of the Holy Ghost. But he say, I thank God. I pray in tongue. More than you all. It was not a negative competition. He wanted to show that as father over you. As leader over you, I am required to do far more than you. Jesus. When you fast seven days, I can't fast three days. When you give one, I can't give one. I need to empty myself. Now I'm speaking in the context of this altar. Hoping to give you a picture of you in your personal altar. That dedicated place. That place established where you call on the name of God. That place of your vow. That place of exchange. That place of your covenant. That place where you call on the name of your children. That place where you call on the business that you lay in your ambition roadmap. I want you to understand. If you have to be noted spiritually as a guardian of that altar, you must be able at any given time to lay the highest sacrifice. Mm. Sacrifice equal power. Somebody say sacrifice equal power. Sacrifice equals power. Sacrifice equals power. If there is no sacrifice, there will be no power. Those who want to flow in the power of God and think that it is just like that, you must think again. In the spiritual realm, when you tap into high level of sacrifice, you will do so only through high level of, if you tap into a high level of power, rather, you will do so only through a high level of sacrifice. If your sacrifice is up here, your level of power can never be up here. It's a bad dream. It will never happen. Amen. Men and women who know how to pray. Elijah went on a mountain top. The Bible says he knelt down before God. He put his head between his knees. Don't try it at home. <laughs> he did that once, twice, thrice. He kept on doing it till the seventh day. Ministry becomes a waste of time when all you think of is shining shoes. That's right. There is no power in you. You are literally a disgrace in what they call ministry. No fruits. Mm. The only blessing we see in you is a big mouth. <laughs> God help us. <laughs> You join ministry because you wanted to be applauded. You join ministry because you think that somebody will carry your Bible. Aren't you strong enough to carry your own? I tell you. Papa. Ministry. If you got to succeed in ministry, you must understand that a minister is a servant. Amen. You must understand. If you cannot wash the feet, you cannot be the leader. If you cannot wash the feet, you can never be spiritually a blessing to them. If you as a, a whatever you call yourself, I'm not speaking here only, okay? Uh, whatever you are, if you feel that uh, I am a minister, I have 12 under me, so that uh, 12 times a day, they must wash my feet. You, something is seriously wrong with you. Sacrifice. Sacrifice in doing. Sof sacrifice in being. 
Do you know how to cry someone else tears? Mm. Have you ever moved out of your own shoes and put yourself on somebody else's shoes to feel the pain? Unless you can feel the pain, you can't effectively pray for them. That's right. True. Unless you carry the burden, you will never be able to really represent the needs before the almighty God. Mm. Jesus. If you have to be a high priest over your altar, you must be able at any given time to lay on it the highest price ever. The highest sacrifice. If you understand the life of sacrifice, you will understand the life of power. Last. Please have a seat if you can. If you are to be a guardian of an altar who is effective, you must observe the requirement of the altar and be able to enforce it. You must Observe the requirement of your altar and be able to enforce it. Not only to yourself, enforce it to everybody around. There is a way to behave in the house of God. There is a way to behave on my altar. I don't care how talented you are. I don't care how many people love you. On my altar, there is one way or the highway. Amen. Amen. Here, I live in submission. I don't do things because I feel like doing. Who are you? From which hole are you coming from? To come and impose a will that is beside the will of the almighty God on this altar. I will help you find the door. I will kick you out so hard that it will take you a time to recover. Jesus. On my altar is one way or the highway. Why? Because I'm a guardian of this altar. Amen. Are you hearing me? It is given to me to observe the requirement of this altar and make sure that the, it is enforced. Right. And that is I say to you with regard to your own altar. If you have raised an altar, you must make sure that uh, this altar, if there are requirements, they are all observed. And whoever comes in your jungle must live accordingly. Amen. There are houses that uh, you will not come wearing your shoes, you must uh, remove your shoes. And whoever is in the house and uh, is uh, owner or leader of the house sees you with your shoes. It's given to him or her to say, shoes off. Do you understand? Yes. Now, let me, let me tell you something. Spirituality is best sustained by the law of sacred. Where there is a sense of sacred, spirituality blossom. When there is a sense of the sacred, spirituality blossoms. Spirituality is best sustained by the sacred. If everything is everything, I promise you, you don't miss what God is doing and what God is saying. You see, we understand that we are saved and we are no longer bound by the things that we see. So much so that the enemy has pushed us to go to the extreme. Where in the house of God today, you behave just like that. You lie even in the house of God. I think it's a double sin. Lie at least in the parking, but you lie inside the auditorium. God help us. If you have to fall in temptation, before mm -hmm, mm -hmm, lead him to the parking lot. From now on, someone who's leading you in the parking lot, don't go. But this is just to say, you see, we have taken things so lightly right. that uh, you lie in the house of God. You can come to touch the altar, not because of anything, because you want to show somebody who you are. 
from there till here, you are walking as a, it is a mispaging or something. Everybody's in the Holy Ghost, they must stop because the, you. Be sure to tune in next time for the continuation of this preaching. When the sacred is well established, spirituality blossoms. Some of you, you know, when you used to consult, you go to that native doctor. You may be high in society, but they, this man, educated or not, will make you feel small. Your shoes off, no chair, you sit on the floor. You and your wife, Mr. and Mrs. on the floor. Just by creating that environment, you sense something. It comes to you, looks at you. Where there is a sense of sacred spirituality blossom. And when the sense of sacred is lost, oh. spirituality is undermined. Amen. You get married to a spiritual woman. Your wife is filled with the Holy Ghost. She serves God. But because she's your wife, you undermine her. You take her lightly. You shout at her all the time. You will see people from all over being blessed by her and through her. But you, because you see, you have neglected the sacred. Make sure that in anything you do, be it relationship or be it things of God, you keep the sacred. And when it comes to the altar that you have raised, on which you are called to be a guardian, keep the sacred. If you were blessed by this video, be sure to subscribe to our channel. You can catch Pastor Arthur Lukau on AMI TV on the public bouquet or on our live stream on AMITV.com. You can follow Pastor Arthur Lukau on all social media platforms at Arthur Lukau.